morning. Drew Kaiser is with us this week for our fall revival with Salem Creek Church of Christ. Good morning, Drew. Morning. We're going to talk about some things in a book that you have recently published, and it has to do with social media and some of the dangers that that presents to Christians. Tell us about the name of that book. Uh, the name of the book is Dangerous Playground, and of course the dangerous playground would be social media, any of the platforms on there. That's the idea. It seems like such an innocent thing. I mean, everybody is on Facebook and Twitter, and yet we know that it presents some problems to people who love the Lord. I want to ask you some questions. Maybe you can talk about these things with our audience. First question I, I think is a really important question. What is the greatest challenge that's presented by social media? Uh, it's hard to narrow it down to one challenge, but one of the things we talked about at services yesterday was how it changes the way you think about yourself. It's like we use it as a tool for reinventing ourselves, and then we also see it as a weapon that attacks our self-esteem, and it's had a huge impact on mental health in the country. So I, if I had to name one problem that stands out above all of them, I, I guess that's the one I would name. So through Facebook or some other social media, I can create a new me, which may not match reality. Well, some people think they can create a new them, but yeah, that's the problem. It, it, what we see on Facebook or any of the social media platforms are just versions of people, not actual people, and we've got to keep that in mind. People looking to find their fulfillment in the wrong place, perhaps. Yeah, definitely. Well, think about this question also and, and see if you can give us a good answer for that. You think parents should supervise their children's use of social media? I have a lot of parents suggesting that to do that would be an invasion of their privacy. Oh, no, you've you got to snoop. You got to you got to get into your kids' business. You've got two you children, beautiful young daughter and a, and, a, and a handsome son, Ava and Jackson. You mean you would actually snoop on their social media? Oh, yeah. use? Uh, my wife is really the one who does that, but uh, my son's not on social media, but my daughter has an Instagram account and my wife every night gets her phone, goes through all my daughter's text messages, goes through all her Instagram posts. Uh, we're linked to those. Parents need to friend, uh, follow, whatever the term is, uh, their kids' profiles, and then get their phones and go through all of their uh, all of their messages and know their password and username. And if they ever sense that their kid is trying to hide something from them, they need a timeout on social media for a while. I am detecting that you were very much old school. To yeah, use that I guess phrase. you call that old school. Old school. You actually think that God has placed children in your hands and given you responsibility for them. Yeah, and you only got a short period of time to... What you're doing is you're training them to use this technology safely. It's on-the-job training. You don't train somebody by just turning them loose on something new. Exactly. You walk with them through that for a period of time, and then they're, it's safe for them to proceed on their own. To use the a phrase, I guess, barred from the blacksmith, you believe you need to strike while the iron is hot. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. Well take, put. Take ownership of your family, in other words, and that's, yes. that's a God-given responsibility. Well, a third follow-up question to that. We hear a lot today about this thing that I call, that the world calls social, uh, or excuse me, the world calls online bullying. Yeah. Uh, that's something I've never been able to get my head around. If I'm being bullied online, turn off the computer and get away from it. But how can parents address this problem of online bullying? Because it does seem to be a big problem. Well, with, with uh, kids and even young adults and a lot of uh, middle-aged adults, there's no such thing as turning off the online activity they're tapped in all the time so Constantly. the way you're looking your method would work if people thought that way but they they just don't so the bullying is persistent it never shuts off it's often anonymous so and 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 the people doing the bullying don't consider that there's a real human being on the other side of this so it's a lot angrier and harsher and rougher in that way and uh, there have been a lot of suicides and a lot of other serious problems that have come as a result of online bullying. 
Um, so it's a real problem we've got to take seriously and, and train kids on how to deal with it. Give us a suggestion for dealing with that. What can a parent suggest to their child? Well, uh, unfriend whoever's doing the bullying immediately. Just, uh, you know, we can block bullying with the technology. And that's the first thing you've got to do. And then, uh, but a parent's got to know that it's going on. I think in the extreme cases where there have been suicides and things, uh, parents have not realized until too late what was happening. And that goes back to the previous question about knowing what's going on. It's not just to keep your kid from doing something wrong, it's also to protect your kid. Parents need to be involved in what's going on in their children's lives, including their online stuff. Yes, and parents also have to model appropriate behavior as well. You can't ask your kid, for example, not to look at her device at the supper table if you're doing it. Okay, That's guilty. <laughs> well, I got another question for you, uh, and this is more in a positive direction. It's out there. Uh, the technology is not going to go away just because bad stuff right. happens in connection with it. So I believe an important question is, how can it be used legitimately? Right. I don't believe in abstinence from social media. I, I mean, it's good if you can do it. I'm not saying sure. you shouldn't, but uh, I'm not advocating that. I think that it can be used safely and appropriately. Just realize that you're dealing with a dangerous playground and uh, proceed accordingly. And there's a lot of great things that you can use it for. I mean, it was established for connection so that people could connect with one another all over the world. And I know a lot of grandparents that live a long ways away from their grandchildren enjoy looking at the pictures of their family and communicating right. in that way. And also, you can put out positive messages and encouragement just as easily as you can put out bullying and negative messages. And so, it's the same rule of thumb that the Bible gives us for our speech. Use your tongue to edify and build up, not to curse and tear down. In a short answer, that's, that's the best way I can suggest using this stuff in a good way, in a positive way. Well, it's not going to be too many minutes before this film is going to be posted on social media, so right. you're going to be out there. And uh, we have advertised our revival meeting through social media. Let me encourage everybody that sees this to come out tonight, tomorrow night, and Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. And here, Drew, he is doing a tremendous job encouraging us to be servants, to live as true servants of God in this world. Thank you for answering these questions with us today. I was happy to. Thanks for inviting me on. Look forward to hearing you tonight. I hope everyone has a great day.